Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Who doesn't love a cozy jumper that can keep you warm and you look cute in? Dolls have been my inspiration in making this. It's familiar to the things you love, but with a new twist that I'm excited about. And if you're excited too, be sure to click like and subscribe. It's a great way to support creatives like myself. And if you're really excited, be sure to click the bell and turn on all notifications so you never miss out on the fun stuff we have coming. Now I've got secret things to work on, so without further ado. For this project, any category for yarn will work, but I used a total of 495 grams of yarn, and that's 750 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 4 and 5.5 and millimeter hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order and enter this week's pattern giveaway by commenting the last time you got a haircut. I think I'm almost at three years. Details down below. I'm using three stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet. and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we are first gonna grab our category four yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're gonna grab our four millimeter hook and start off by making a chain the height that we want our band to be. Now I want mine to be about two inches or five centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 12. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain of three. That counts as our turning chain, not as a stitch. And from here, we're going to yarn over, preparing for a double crochet, and we're going to insert our first double crochet into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook. So go ahead and insert your hook into there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. There's our first double crochet, let's do just one more. Yarn over, into that next chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Continue to put one double crochet into every chain. We have just finished up our row number one, and now to get started on our row number two, that's going to be a row of back loop slip stitches. So from here, we're gonna chain one, flip our work, and we're gonna insert our hook into that first available stitches back loop, or the loop that's furthest away from us. Yarn over, and pull through everything on your hook. Let's do one more. Into that next back loop. Yarn over, and pull through everything. Now continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Okay, we've just made our way all the way down with our row number two for our first back loop slip stitch row. And now we're gonna switch back to our double crochet rows, but now everything is going to be into the back loops. So start with a chain of three. There's one, two, three. Again, that's our turning chain. We're gonna yarn over, preparing for a double crochet. Then into that first available stitches back loop, Go ahead and insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. And we're going to continue to put one back loop double crochet into every stitch until we reach the end of this row. When you reach the end, do a chain one, flip your work, and then one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. We're going to repeat those two rows until this band can stretch around our shoulders, making sure that we meet back right after a double crochet row. Then I'll meet you guys back. I'm back with my band. I have a total of 113 rows, and that's 33 and a half inches or 85 centimeters unstretched. And don't mind these stitch markers, these are just here for me so I can help keep count. What we're going to do from here is single crochet along the entirety of the bottom while combining our two points, and then we can get along with the body. So the first thing we're going to do 
is switch out to our five and a half millimeter hook. I'm going to insert my hook into right where my working yarn is. I'm going to place this on top of the other end's corner, making sure that we're forming a point just like this. And once we have this, we're going to be working along this side, making sure that we're working into the side double crochets first. So we're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the back panel. Now this may be tricky because this is a bigger hook size, so your stitches may be a little tight, but it's only going to be for these stitches right here. Everything else is going to be a little bit easier. So go ahead and yarn over and pull through everything to secure the two points together. Now, once one is connected, we're going to start by inserting our hook into the first side double crochet, into the front panel, and then into the next stitch that we have going into the back. So go ahead and insert your hook into there, and then single crochet. Now we're going to be putting two single crochets into every side double crochet, so let's do the next one. Into the same side double crochet, we're going to insert our hook with one more. And then into the next stitch that we have into the back panel. We're going to insert our hook into there, wiggle it through if you have to. And then single crochet. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now let's do the next one. We're going to skip over our side slip stitch row and then insert your hook into that next side double crochet again. So insert. And then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and then since we only have one single crochet into this first side double, one more into that same stitch. Insert your hook into that next stitch into the back panel, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the back panel. All right, so I have just made my way all the way down, single crocheting twice into every side double crochet and once into every stitch into the back panel until I don't have any more back panel stitches. From here, I'm going to put two single crochets into every side double crochet, so the same thing that we've been doing, all the way around until we are ready to seam these two sides together. And just to let you guys know where to finish, we're going to count two single crochets for every side double crochet that we have. So since I made a total of 12 chains, I'm going to count out 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And I'll meet you guys back right here so that we can connect them together. All right, so I am back and I have made my way all the way around with my single crochets. I have the correct amount of double crochet rows left, and now we're going to seam this end together. So we're going to start by inserting our hook into that corner stitch of the front panel, then into that next side double crochet row that we have. So this is mine right here. We're going to insert with one single crochet. And just like how we did the other side, we're going to be putting two single crochets into every side double crochet. So into that next stitch into the front panel, insert into that stitch, and then into the same side double crochet into the back panel. Let's do just one more set into that next stitch into the front panel and then into the next side double crochet into the back panel and then once more into the same back panel side double crochet into that next stitch into the front and then into the same side double crochet into the back panel single crochet. Keep doing this making our way all the way down and then I'll meet you guys back. And right after we have made our way all the way down, this is my last single crochet. All we're going to do is do a chain up of one and cut, and then we can get started on the body. All right, so we have just finished up single crocheting along the bottom of our band. Right before we get started with the body, we're going to need to insert our stitch marker right in the middle where our shoulder is going to be. So the easiest way to figure that out is to first find the middle points. From our point that we have right here, we should have two since we have an even number of stitches. And if you guys have my numbers, I inserted my stitch markers into the 57th and 58th stitch from our middle point. Once when we have found that middle point, we're going to find the middle point between the depth of our v-neck and the stitch marker that we just inserted. 
So if you guys have my numbers, I've inserted mine into the 29 stitch, making sure that I did the same thing on both sides. Then once we have that, we can get started on the shoulder portion of our body. So getting started on our body portion, we're going to grab our same yarn, make a slip knot, our five and a half millimeter hook, and we're all going to start by making an even number chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, keeping in mind that we will have a bottom band. So I'm going to start off by making a chain that's 12 inches or 31 centimeters or a total of 46 chains. Now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and we're going to get started on our moss stitch row. So start by doing a chain one, that's our turning chain, and then chain two, that's going to count as our chain. That's going to make more sense in a second. Once we have those two chains, we're going to count four chains in from our hook. So let's count in one, two, three, and then four. Into that fourth chain, insert your hook with a single crochet. So insert your hook into that chain with one single crochet, and we just made our first chain one space. Let's do another one. We're going to chain one from here, skip one chain, and then single crochet into the next chain. Let's do it again. Chain one, skip one chain, single crochet into the next. From here we're going to chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next chain, making our way all the way down to the end of this chain. Our first moss stitch row is all finished, so let's get started on our second. Once we're here, we're going to do a chain two. That first chain is going to count as our turning chain, that second chain is going to count as our chain. Flip our work, and now we're going to single crochet into that chain one space from our previous row. So we're going to find that chain one space, or that gap, and then single crochet into there making our first chain one space for this row. Chain one again, single crochet into that next chain one space, which is this gap right over here. So insert your hook with one single crochet. Let's do this again. Chain one into that chain one space, single crochet, and keep doing this, making our way all the way down. I'll meet you guys back to get started on our third row, which is an extended single crochet row. All right, our second moss stitch row is all finished, and now we're going to get started on our extended single crochet. So start by doing a chain one and flip our work. Every third row is going to be an extended single crochet row where we put one into every stitch and chain one space. So let's get that started. Insert your hook into that first stitch that we have, not the chain one space. We want to make sure we're going into every stitch. So into that first stitch, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through. You should have two loops on our hook. So over here we're going to yarn over, pull through just that first loop, two loops again, yarn over, pull through two. That is our first extended single crochet, so let's do that again. Our next stitch that we're working into is the chain one space. Now you can insert your hook into that entire gap like that. And then from here, we're going to yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. Let's do one more set. This is my next stitch that I have, which is a single crochet from our previous row. So go ahead and insert your hook into there. Pull through, yarn over, pull through one. Yarn over, pull through two. And then next is into that chain one space, so insert your hook into that gap, pull through, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two. We're going to continue to put one extended single crochet into every stitch and chain one space, making our way all the way down, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, we've made our way all the way down with our extended single crochet row, and this is going to be our row sequence. So two moss stitch rows, and then one extended single crochet. So I'm just going to get started with the next moss stitch row with you guys, and then I'll let you guys continue on from there. So to start off every moss stitch row, we're going to chain two, and flip our work. 
Now, since our previous row was our extended single crochet row, what we're going to do is skip the first stitch, single crochet into the next with one single crochet. That's our first chain one space for this row. Let's do the next. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. Chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. So the same way that we started the chain off with. From here, we're going to repeat our two moss stitch and single crochet rows until this portion reaches from the edge of our shoulder to the base of our neck, making sure that we meet back right after a extended single crochet row. Now this is going to be where the width of our piece comes in, so if you guys want to add more rows, go for it, but I'll meet you guys back once we have all this done. Alright, so I am back with my shoulder portion. I have a total of 21 rows and my width is about 5.5 inches or 14 centimeters. And we ended right after our extended single crochet row. And now I can introduce our collar. And then we'll start working on the first half. So the first thing we're going to do is insert our hook into that side stitch marker stitch that we have. You can take that stitch marker out. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything to attach our shoulder portion to our collar. From here, we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, making sure we're working towards the point. So this is my next available stitch. I'm going to insert my hook into there with one slip stitch, and that helps us work our way up to the next row, and we're going to flip our work. Since we ended on an extended, since we ended on an extended single crochet row, our next row is a moss stitch row. And how we're going to get it started, since we're starting at the base, is chain one, skip the first stitch from our single crochet row, and then single crochet into the next stitch. From here, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next, and just one more together, chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. So we've just finished up our first row when it comes to the section that's connected to our body, which was a moss stitch row. We're going to do another moss stitch row since we're doing them in sets of two. So at the end of this row, chain two, flip our work, and put one single crochet into every chain one space with a chain one in between. That's our first chain one space. Chain one into this chain one space, single crochet. Repeat this until we don't have any more stitches left, and I'll meet you back so that we can connect it into the base together. We've just worked our way all the way up with our second moss stitch row, and now we're going to connect it into the base together. So into that next stitch, into the collar, we're going to slip stitch into there to close off this row, and since we just did two moss stitch rows, our next row is an extended single crochet row but we are going to be doing a decrease of three into the three stitches nearest to the base. So start by slip stitching up just one stitch and flip our work. And how we're going to do a decrease of three is start by inserting your hook into that first stitch from our previous row, yarn over, pull through, into the next stitch from our previous row, which is a chain one space, so insert your hook, pull through, and then once more into that next single crochet stitch. Yarn over, pull through. We should have four loops on our hook. So from here we're gonna yarn over, pull through three, two loops on our hook, yarn over, and pull through two. From here we're going to continue per usual with putting one extended single crochet into every stitch. Just to do the next one, into that next chain one space, I'm gonna insert my hook, Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through one. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. Do two moss stitch rows right after that, and then I will meet you guys back right when we're about to start our next extended single crochet row. We're back, and we have just finished two moss stitch rows. We should now be along the bottom, getting ready for our extended single crochet row. So from here, chain one and then put one into every stitch. I'll meet you guys back when we have three stitches left, 
right before the base so that we can do our decrease. I have just finished my extended single crochets and I have three stitches right before the base. We're going to do another decrease of three just as a refresher and then from here it's going to be a repeat of our six previous rows so let's get this started. Into the third to last stitch I'm going to insert my hook, pull through, into the second to last, insert, pull through, and then into that last, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through three, yarn over, pull through two, and that is our decrease. We're now going to connect it into the base. So slip stitch into that next stitch just to close off this row, and then in order to work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into that next stitch, flip our work, and then repeat starting with two moss stitch rows. So I'm just going to do the first few stitches with you guys. Start with a chain one, skip one stitch, single crochet into the next, chain one, skip one stitch, and single crochet into the next. Keep repeating our six previous rows, making sure that we're doing our decrease into the three stitches nearest to the base, only into our extended single crochet rows, and I will meet you guys back once we reach the point. All right, so we have made our way all the way down to our point, and what we're gonna do from here is the same stitches that we did in reverse. So we're going to mirror this first side. Depending on what your last row is from this previous side, we're going to do that for our next row. So my last row right here was a moss stitch row. Since I ended along the top, we're going to connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing. So into this next point stitch, I'm going to insert my hook with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain one, flip my work, and do my moss stitch row. Now we're going to do our moss stitch rows until we are ready to do our single crochet row. It doesn't matter if you guys end at the top or on the bottom, I will meet you guys back. All right, so I have repeated the same amount of rows that I have over here, and I am back right when we're about to get started on our first extended single crochet row. So just to let you guys know, I only did one single crochet row along this end because that's all I had on this side. Since I ended along the bottom, I'm going to put one extended single crochet into every stitch, leaving that last stitch so that we can do an increase of three into there together. If you guys ended along the top, just hang out to the next clip so that we can increase together. Alright, so I have one stitch right next to my base, and now I'm going to do my increase of three extended single crochets. So start by inserting your hook into the stitch that's nearest to the base with one extended single crochet, and then two more into that same stitch. There's two, and then there's three. From here, we're going to connect it into the base the same way that we've been doing everything else. So slip stitch into that next stitch. We're going to slip stitch up the next stitch to get started on the next row. Chain one, flip our work, and then we're going to continue on with our two moss stitch rows. And then after that, our one extended single crochet row, making sure that we do an increase of three into that stitch nearest to the base. We're going to keep repeating those three rows all the way up until we reach this stitch marker right here, and then I'll meet you guys back. So we have made our way all the way up to this stitch marker over here. From here, we're going to do the same shoulder portion that we did along the side. So I'm just going to get this next row started off with you guys, and then we can continue on from there. So from here, our next row should be the same row as this last row that we have over here. And since we ended on an extended single crochet row, we're going to start with an extended single crochet. So we're all going to start with a chain one, flip our work, and then just put one extended single crochet into every stitch and then do two moss stitch rows and then repeat. Keep repeating those three rows until we have the same amount of shoulder rows as the other side. Do a chain up a one and cut and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, I am back and I have just finished the entirety of my front panel. I did do a chain up a one and cut and now we're gonna get started with the back. 
and the back is going to have the same thing that we did for the shoulder. So start by making the same amount of chains and same amount of rows as our front panel shoulder portion. And then I'll meet you guys back just to show you guys where we're going to insert our hook. All right, so my shoulder portion for the back panel is all finished. And now let's connect it to the base. So I'm going to start by flipping my work over. And I'm going to slip stitch it into the same stitch that our stitch marker was in. Or the one that the front panel is coming out of. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And then now that our shoulder portion is connected, we're going to continue with our two moss stitch rows and one extended single crochet row, making our way all the way across with no increases or decreases. I'll meet you guys back once we reach this stitch marker all the way over here. All right, so I have made my way all the way down to my next stitch marker. And now from here, we're going to continue with the shoulder. So all we're going to do is continue with the next row in our row sequence and then just keep repeating our two moss stitch and single crochet rows until we have the same amount of rows as our front panel. Just to show you guys, my previous row was a moss stitch row. My next row is another moss stitch row. So all I'm going to do is chain two into that chain one space and single crochet. I'll meet you guys back once we have done a chain up of one and cut and our shoulder portion is all finished. My back panel is all finished. I did do a chain of a one and cut, and now it's time to seam the sides. So we're all going to start by flipping our work inside out. And by doing that, the ribbon for our collar is going to be facing each other. And now that it's flipped, we're all going to start by inserting our hook into that stitch that our front and back panel is coming out of. We're doing it this way so that there's no gaps. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook pull through. Now from here we're going to make our way all the way down putting one seam crochet into every side row making sure we're going into both the front and back panel at the same time. So let's get that started. This is my first side row that I have right here. It could be a moss, it could be a single, it does not matter. I'm just going to insert my hook into that top loop. I'm going to find that first row along the back, insert my hook into there, and then a single crochet. Let's do that again. Into that next side row, which is this one for me, I'm going to insert my hook into there into the front panel. And then into the back row, I'm going to find that next side row, insert my hook, and then single crochet. Now we are going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain above one and cut. Do the same thing that we just did here on the other side, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, so we have just finished up seeing both of our shoulders, and now we're going to try on our piece, insert our stitch marker right where we want the armhole to be, and then we're going to seam up the sides. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 16th stitch from the bottom, and this is just about 4 inches or 10 centimeters. And then from there, we're going to do the same seam that we did for the shoulders. Go ahead and insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. So let's just do the first one. Inserting your hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, and then into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and then single crochet them together. From here, we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch, making our way all the way up, and then do a chain up of one and cut. When we have that, do the same thing on the other side, and then I'll meet you back for the sleeve. Now that our side is all seamed up, we're now ready to get started on our sleeve. We're going to start by inserting our hook into this bottom corner stitch that's right next to our seam. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and then from here I'm going to make an even number chain that reaches all the way down to where I want my cuff to start. So I've already measured my now. That's going to be a total of 9 inches or 23 centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 38. Now that we have our chain, we're going to start with our moss stitch. So block off that last chain, do a chain one that counts as our turning chain, do our second chain that counts as a chain. From here, we're going to insert our hook into the fourth chain from our hook with a single crochet. So let's count one, two, three, and then four. Insert your hook into that fourth chain with just one single crochet. And that is our first chain one space, just like how we started off every other moss stitch section. From here, we're going to chain one, 
skip one stitch, single crochet into the next. We're going to continue doing this, making our way all the way down. Now that we've made our way all the way down with our first moss stitch row, we're going to connect it into the base. It's going to be a complete repeat of the back, so I'm just going to refresh you guys on how we connect it this time, and then we'll continue with the rest. Start by inserting your hook, insert next available stitch with a slip stitch, just like that to close off his first row. We're going to slip stitch into the next stitch to work our way up to the next row, which is a moss stitch row. Chain one. Flip our work and then continue with our moss stitches. Repeat our two moss stitch rows and one extended single crochet row until we don't have any more stitches left. I'll meet you back so that we can seam everything together. I've just made my way all the way around with my sleeve and now we're going to seam it. The first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is slipped wrong side out so that all of our seams can be along the inside. And then from here, since I've ended along the outer edge, I'm going to insert my hook into the corner stitch of the back panel and into my working yarn. If you guys are along the inside, just insert your hook into both of the first available stitches that we have. And then from here, we're going to pull our working yarn through, do a chain up of one to secure. And this is going to be the same seam as all of our other seams, so we're just going to do the first one together. Go ahead and insert your hook into that first stitch into the front panel. And then insert your hook into the next stitch into the back panel and then single crochet them together. I'm going to keep doing this until I don't have any more stitches left. I'm going to do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we have just finished up seaming our sleeve and now we're going to get started on the cuff. We are first going to want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out and right side up. And then we're going to switch back out to our four millimeter hook. Start by inserting your hook into any one of these bottom rows, it doesn't matter which one. Insert your yarn onto your hook, pull through, and then do a chain up of one to secure. Now from here, we're gonna be putting one single crochet into every other side row so that we can get a nice cinch. So let's get that started. Let's find our first side row. Yours could be an extended single crochet or a moss, it doesn't matter. Just find that first one. Go ahead and insert your hook with one single crochet. My next side row that I have is this extended single, so I'm going to skip this and then into the next stitch, which is a moss, single crochet, let's do that again. My next row is this side moss stitch row, so I'm gonna skip that. And then into my next, which is an extended side single crochet row, then single crochet into there. We're gonna keep doing this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain one space, let me meet you guys back. So our single crochet row is all finished, and now we're going to make a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. I want mine to be roughly three inches or seven centimeters, so I'm gonna start by making a chain of 15. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain of three. That doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain. We're gonna yarn over and then insert our hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook with a double crochet. So insert into that fourth chain, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Continue to put one double crochet into every chain. Now we just put one double crochet into every chain and now we're going to slip stitch it into the base. We just wanna double check and make sure that our work is still flipped right side out and we wanna make sure that we're working towards the left or clockwise. Once we have that, we're going to count up the next two stitches into the base. So count up one, two stitches and then we're going to slip stitch to close off this row. Now our next row is going to be a back loop slip stitch row just like how we did the band. So we're only going to slip stitch up one stitch, flip our work, and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. At the end of this row, chain three and then put one back loop double crochet into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. Repeat these two rows until we don't have any more stitches left, and I'll meet you back so that we can seam our cuff together. We have just made our way all the way around with our back loop double crochet and back loop slip stitch rows. We don't have any more stitches left to go into, and we're going to use an outside loop slip stitch seam, so we all need to make sure that our work is slipped right side out. And we're all gonna start by inserting our hook into that first available stitches front loop into the front panel. So go ahead and insert your hook into there into the same first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook in through that 
back loop. We should have three loops on our hook. So from here, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do this again. Into the next stitch, into the front panel, insert your hook only in through that front loop or the loop that's closest to you. And then into the back panel, insert your hook into that next available stitch, only going in through that back loop. Three loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all three. We're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. Do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat the entirety of our sleeve that we just did here on the other side. Both of our sleeves are all finished, and now we're going to get started on our bottom band. So, switching back to our five and a half millimeter hook, we're going to start by single crocheting along the bottom of our piece. Insert your hook into any one of these bottom side rows. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through. Do a chain up of one to secure, and just like how we did the cuff, we're going to be single crocheting into every other side row. So let's do the first few. We're going to insert our hook into the first side row that we have. My first is this moss stitch. If yours is an extended single crochet, that's completely fine. Go ahead and just insert your hook with one single crochet. We're going to skip the next side row, which mine is this moss stitch. So I'm going to move on to the next, which is this extended single crochet. Find that side loop and single crochet. Let's do one more set. Skip this next side row and then find the next side row, which is my next moss stitch row. Insert your hook into there with just one single crochet. We're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way around. We have just single crocheted along the bottom of our piece and now we're going to work on the height of our band. So start off by making a chain the height that you want yours to be. I want mine to be about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 10. Now that I have my chain, I'm going to block off my last chain. Do a chain of three. That doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain. We're going to yarn over, preparing for a double crochet. And then insert your hook into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook with a double crochet. Continue to put one double crochet into every chain. And now that we've double crocheted into every chain, we're now going to slip stitch it into the base. But we do want to make sure that our work is still flipped right side out and that we're working clockwise or to the left. So what we're going to do from here is count one, two stitches. Slip stitch into that second stitch to close our first double crochet row. Slip stitch into the next stitch to start our back loop slip stitch row. Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. This is going to be a repeat of the cuff, so go ahead and do our back loop double crochet and back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around. When we don't have any more stitches left, I'll meet you guys back to seam it up. All right, I have just made my way all the way around with my band. I don't have any more stitches left to go into, so we're now going to seam it. This is going to be the same outside loop slip stitch seam as our cuff, so let's just do the first one together. Make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning our ribbing is faced out towards us. And we're going to insert our hook into that first available stitches front loop or that loop that's closest to us. And then into that next available stitch into the back panel, insert in through that back loop. Shed off three loops on our hook, so yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Continue to do this, and when we don't have any more stitches left, do a chain up of one and cut. Our bottom band is all seamed, and the last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And catch y'all the next one. Bye!